Welcome from the deep, I am Mike the Finder, and this is yet another episode of The Graveyard Ship. Christmas horror movies are one of my favorite things, and there are a lot of them. All through the house, Once Upon a Time at Christmas, Good Tidings, Christmas Slays, Holiday Hell, Krampus, Mother Krampus, Better Watch Out, Red Christmas, Black Christmas, Black Christmas. But there's so many of these Christmas horror movies that I try to make it a goal of mine to watch at least one new one every single year, as well as pull out a bunch of the ones I like every single year, like Black Christmas, Treevenge, Better Watch Out is a newer one that I really enjoyed. Christmas just makes for a fantastic setup for a horror movie. So today we're gonna be talking about a Christmas horror movie that has been on my list for years. Red Christmas from 2016, written and directed by Craig Anderson. This movie has been on my watch list for a long time now, mostly just because the cover is awesome. I mean, it's just a great example of having great cover art, making a movie more memorable than it might otherwise be. This movie takes you through a sweeping range of emotions, and right off the bat, they talk about abortion. I gotta be honest, it almost made me turn it off because the name Red Christmas, and then within the first three seconds of this movie, you're talking about abortion. And it worried me that this movie was gonna be far more about that than it actually was. The basic idea behind this movie is an aborted fetus lives through the abortion. 20 years later, takes its revenge out on the family that did not want it. Now, admittedly, that is actually a pretty awesome setup for a horror movie, and so it felt pretty fresh. Now, I'm not sure I would call Red Christmas a typical slasher, because a lot of the tropes that you find in a lot of slashers are actually kind of ignored here. Now, that's not necessarily a bad thing, but it does kind of leave this movie feeling a bit <laughs> awkward. <laughs> I can tell Craig Anderson really loves horror movies. That is written all over this movie. You can just feel it. But when you ignore a bunch of the tropes by a lot of the movies set before you, what you're doing is kind of circumventing people's expectations, but not necessarily in a good way. Most slashers have a very classic formula that they follow, and it's the reason that they are so fun. Red Christmas has a lot of emotional depth to it for what it's trying to be, which is why I think this movie is so weird. Not to mention the killer is just so sad and you really empathize with with the guy right off the bat because the first time you see him he gets he gets peed on reckon that's what god wants <laughs> i can't quite figure out why this happens other than maybe the line he's creepy and he smells like urine it's christmas but what it does do is set up how ruthless this guy is. His first kill in this movie is crazy. He rips the guy's <laughs> off and it really sets up what this killer is all about. You can be very empathetic towards him because of who he is and how he is treated in the world. And that might actually be the biggest problem I have with this movie. Cletus is a really sad guy and he has a really sad and twisted backstory. On one hand, it gives him very good motivation for doing what he's doing, but at the same time, it almost almost feels like too much. I'm too sympathetic towards him because of his backstory and because he's immediately thrown out of the house when he shows up. Then we see him being all emo and crying in the woods and it's just this bang, 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 bang. Feel bad for him, feel bad for him, feel bad for him. Come on, you knew you wanna feel bad for him. And I just don't think that setup has enough of a payoff at the end. Now on the other side of that, we have Dee Wallace, the mom. You may know her from the Howling Critters, uh, E.T. I think she was in Cujo. She is a very experienced actress, which is why it's so surprising that she's just so damn terrible in this. And I can't tell if it's the acting or the script. It's probably a combination of a little bit of both. And that was actually pretty surprising considering Dee Wallace's credits. Now we're going to get into spoilers in this review. I'm okay kind of spoiling this movie, mostly because it's not some huge twist ending or anything like that. If you would like to skip the spoiler part of this, I will leave a timestamp up here right now. I'll also try to remember to put chapters down in the timeline down here. It turns out Cletus's backstory was he was was aborted because he had Down syndrome. Now the mom, Diane, already had gone through raising somebody with Down syndrome with Jerry. Jerry, I think, is actually probably my favorite character in this movie because he's just fantastic and there's some very good character progression there. But the mom just couldn't go through with raising somebody with Down syndrome again while her husband was going through chemo and they didn't really know if he was gonna make it. And then the day she decides to go to the clinic to have this done, a terrorist essentially blows up the clinic that she's in. Now, before he actually blows the briefcase 
gets up, he sees Cletus sitting in a bucket in the corner of a room, I guess because they thought it was already dead. Now, we could go through how that would never happen and logic and the real world that would prevent this from ever actually happening. But Cletus is saved from the bomber and he's raised super religious. So when he goes to try to find his family 20 years later, he has all these crazy thoughts about religion and vengeance and love because of who he was raised by. All Cletus wants is for his mother to accept him as he is. And the mom, Diane, never wants to do that. Help me, you love me. Not your mother. Which, in my opinion, kind of gives the mom a very dislikable quality. But at the same time, I totally understand where she's coming from. And so I sympathize with her as well. Not quite as much as the killer, which is yet another issue in this movie. Typically in slashers, you're going to feel bad for the people that are being chased and get super invested on how they're going to get away and if they get away. But in Red Christmas, it kind of feels like they want you to empathize a little too much with the killer so that when he goes after the family, you're like, yeah! And that's not how I took it. Don't get me wrong, I'm super into slashers and vengeance is a great reason to have a killer do what they're gonna do in a movie. But in this one, I feel like there might be a little bit too much backstory that makes me care about both sides a little bit too much, which makes the whole thing uncomfortable to watch. He goes through and kills every single member of the family slowly, and the kills are brutal. The very first kill right off the bat is nuts. <coughs> And then he kills Hope by chopping her directly in half. And it's brutal. Oh, that's brutal. Well, and it's your idea. And every kill from the bear trap to the blender, Jerry's death, all of it is just so intense. And because there's so much plot, you kind of care from all sides about both the killer and the family, and you kind of almost root for them to be reunited almost. By the end of this movie, I was actually really bummed out. There's no other word that I can use. You know, the reason the final girl became a trope in horror is because you have to have some hope at the end of these slasher movies, otherwise it's just a horrible story. And that's kind of what this is. It's done by somebody that you can tell just loves horror with every ounce of their being, but it's just a huge bummer. And you need somebody at the end other than the damn baby to live. I think maybe it should have been Susie and the baby that both survived in the bear suit. I think maybe that would have made me like the ending a little bit better. But all in all, it's just a huge bummer because everyone dies except the baby who wasn't even a character at the beginning of the movie. Jerry's death is so significant in this movie for me that everything that happens post that I'm kind of not on board with anymore. And then he kills Susie too, and it just felt brutal and unforgiving for kind of no reason. I do love that both the mom and the killer die at the end. That was very satisfying because they're both kind of unlikable and maybe both kind of deserve what they got. But all in all, I can't really praise the ending that much because there's just too many deaths. No one survives and I don't like that. I am not generally into nihilistic horror in that way because I feel like you need a, a little bow tie. The end of Texas Chainsaw Massacre, her getting away from Leatherface as he dances in the street with his chainsaw and her maniacal laughing is what made that movie one of the greatest horror movies of all time. And that trope has been done over and over and over again for a reason. You have to have somebody that I care about live at the end in order to not have this huge downer ending. And that's all I was left with after this movie. Now, with all that being said, I did enjoy this movie. It's a fun, brutal ride on the way there, and it definitely has emotional moments where I actually cared. I watched this yesterday, and to be honest, I kind of just felt bummed after, which is why I didn't record this yesterday after I watched it. And then I rewatched it today before I sat down to do this, and I was left kind of feeling the exact same way. It's filmed pretty well. The cinematography is pretty good. There's nothing super to write home about there. And then there's also some weird, image stabilization wobble. I feel like maybe they had just gotten a gimbal or something and didn't quite know how to balance it. There was something going on with the camera where it felt almost nauseating and a little too artificial and not handheld enough. There's not crazy amazing framing and composition in this movie constantly, but there is some of it there. But the lighting is something they struggle with a lot. There's a lot of really grainy footage in here. The practical lighting in this movie is so weird at times. There's just colors for no reason that were not there before. 
four. They use red and green in very strange ways. So the lighting is something that put me off a lot and lighting is huge for me. And the lighting in this just came off as very novice and unprofessional looking. But when you mix it with the, the weird lighting and the very odd color grade that is on this, it just all kind of made it look cheaper than it actually probably is. What I was afraid was gonna be the cheapest in this movie was the acting. Because when I had watched the trailer for this, it really made the acting feel really crappy, but it was actually surprisingly good. Dee Wallace has these moments where her lines are just delivered in this very weird, unconvincing way, but overall the acting is actually pretty damn decent. And the killer is actually pretty damn cool too. Despite maybe being one of the most evil emo killers ever, he's actually pretty awesome. And he's a genuinely nice guy until you piss him off. His costume is phenomenal. The cloak that he's wearing mixed with the bandages and the ax that he holds through a lot of this movie, it's scary and there is some amazing tension that is built in this movie. And I think that might be the best thing that they do accomplish in this film. They do an amazing job building tension with not only the cinematography, but the acting, but that's kind of the only thing that they do well. It's everything around that tension stuff that just doesn't quite work. From the technical aspects to the acting, all of it is decent, but it's not great. And I think it just falls a little bit short of being one of those movies that I'm gonna pull out every single Christmas. And because of that, I think this is getting a lower grade than it possibly should. I'm gonna go ahead and rate this a five out of 10. This is pretty mediocre. It's right down the middle. It's not horrible. It's not great. The killer is awesome. The kills are good. The acting's pretty good. The cinematography is okay, the lighting is pretty bad. And all in all, I think that merits a five out of 10. But have you seen this? What did you think about Red Christmas? Let me know down in the comments. But if you like this, make sure you hit the like button. If you really liked it, make sure you hit the subscribe button because we got a lot more content like this on this channel. We put out one movie review every single week. Hopefully next week we'll be back to a podcast. So thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you next time from the deep. Bye-bye.